Our reading reading this week is in Acts chapter 20. And uh, if you wanted to, to, to think about a way to maybe structure this chapter, uh, there really are, are, well, there's one overarching idea in two pieces. Uh, we're headed back home. Yes, he's going to Jerusalem. So, so, so the chapter is pointed toward uh, the return from the third journey. That's kind right. of the direction we're going. Uh, and, and in terms of pieces, uh, really much of the first half of the chapter is is logistical. It's yeah. being in this place, uh, sending these guys there. Uh, there's a list of cities, and but not a lot of activity, with the exception of Eutychus, right? Who is a, a warning to all of us preachers about long sermons. <laughs> I think. But anyway, um, uh, then then in the latter part, and and you could, I guess, mark this at verse 17 if you wanted to. He comes to this island off the coast of Asia Minor, and he uh, calls for the Ephesian elders. So. 19 was exclusively devoted right. to Ephesus, and now we get a little, a little logistical stuff, some of the other work and places going, but now we're back to Ephesus again, and really, the bulk of this chapter is this lengthy speech he gives to the Ephesian elders. Yeah, and, and I think, David, what we do with this speech is it's very much like Jesus um, at the Last Supper. You know, we, we mentioned, again, the apostles following in Jesus' ministry footsteps, very similar. And so you know, part of the clue is um, you know, verses 22 and 23, where Paul makes very clear by the Spirit, he's, he's, you know, the Spirit is leading him to Jerusalem, and he knows he's going to suffer there. And so just like Jesus' last journey to Jerusalem, knowing he was meant to die, and just like in Jerusalem when Jesus spent the Last Supper, you know, around that, you know, whether it's the Synoptic Gospels or John 13 through 17, Jesus has these final words for his disciples. This Ephesian city that is featured more than any other city in Paul's work where he spent the most time, he gathers those elders for almost like a, a, a Last Supper discourse, warning them about the work they're going to have to carry on because he's not going to see them anymore. Things are about to change. And, and, and in some ways, you'd have to acknowledge it isn't a very optimistic view of things. No, no. It's, Again, opposition is the rule. It's, it's a warning of trouble. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm particularly impressed when he says, even from among your own selves, yeah. from among this eldership, men are going to arise yeah. and try to lead away disciples. And, and then when he talks about himself personally, and they're clearly... Uh, have great affection for him. Right. I don't know how this is going to work out for me. Right, uh, and you don't hear optimism in that. He doesn't say, "Don't sweat it; everything's going to be good." It's like I don't know if it's going to be good. I, I know trouble's know coming. I know it's bad. Whatever it is, that's right. Yeah. But I don't know what it's going to be or how bad it's going to get. So, but I think you're right. I think it is that that preparation for for the difficult road that's yeah. going to be ahead for them. And you're not going to have me anymore because this is the last time we meet. Yes, yes, because things are about to shift for Paul, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah, he understood that much of what the Spirit was, was moving him into in terms of providentially you know, guiding his ministry. So if you wanted an, an application maybe to think about as you go away from this section, uh, you know, we're very fond in this day and time to complain about how hard <laughs> circumstances are for Christians. And, and I'm not trying to say that isn't true. Yeah. But everything is relative. Right. And, and I think sometimes the value of Acts for Disciples Living Today is to give us better context for our troubles. It um, is a spiritual war at all times. It, it is. And yet we are certainly not living at times like this. No. Uh, no. You know, Christians are not losing their lives in America. That's right. Uh, in fact, we still have the freedom to shout from the rooftop that Jesus is Lord. And, uh, and so I think that, uh, that, that chapters like this thinking about what they were anticipating are good reminders that we're still living in reasonably good days right. with great opportunities to do the work for the Lord. Right. And so I think we need to bear that in mind. Maybe read Acts 20 and be encouraged and inspired to, uh, to do our work for the Lord. Hope that'll benefit you as you spend some time in Acts 20 this week.